here today with Patrick Mason. He is the Professor of Religious Studies and History at Utah State University, where he holds the Leonard J. Arrington Chair of Mormon History and Culture. His books include Proclaim Peace, The Restoration's Answer to an Age of Conflict, and Planted, Belief and Belonging in an Age of Doubt. Um, today we're talking about 2 Nephi 1 through 5, and especially 2 Nephi 4. Um, we have this beautiful digital print um, by Jamal Qureshi, um, and it's Mazmur Nafi, the Arabic Psalm of Nephi, uh, from 2003. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here and how it relates to the, yeah. to the scripture? Yeah, I think this is an amazing piece of art. Uh, so the, the main scriptural text that he's uh, referencing and kind of building off of, actually inscribing in the art uh, mm -hmm. is the so-called Psalm of Nephi from mm -hmm. 2 Nephi chapter 4. And this is, you know, this beloved passage uh, where Nephi, it's it's kind of at the end of where he's narrating his history before he gets into all of his prophecies and quoting mm -hmm. Isaiah and so forth. But this is like this moment of incredible introspection mm -hmm. for, for Nephi, you know, where he's thinking about, I mean, he, the he, he starts out, you know, what what a wretched man, uh, yeah, am I? But, but but then moves into sort of leaning into God and for for his support, for his salvation. Just mm -hmm. really, some of the, I think some of the most beautiful passages mm -hmm. in the Book of Mormon, and, and so that's the the text that inspired Qureshi for this piece. Yeah, that's interesting. Do, do you feel like that, um, or maybe that this particular format of this more Islamic style of art is able to express something more that way? The the emotional side that Nephi's talking about? Yeah, I think it matches up perfectly because, mm -hmm. you know, most art, um, especially Book of Mormon art, it captures a story, a, yeah. a narrative, yeah. right? There's characters doing something or kind of heroic moments or something like that. Mm -hmm. And there's not much going on in 2 Nephi 4 from a narrative perspective. Mm -hmm. It's just text, it's ideas. Yeah. And and actually, so I, I think Qureshi's use of this traditional Arabic Islamic art uh, this calligraphy is perfect because he's actually illustrating the words uh, yeah. themselves mm -hmm. rather than trying to like depict Nephi like wrestling with something or, yeah. or something like that. It's just the words themselves that yeah. become the art. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's a really interesting connection between the art and the word. Um, what Can you tell us at all what... Um, what are the words that you said, you mentioned, yeah. this is the actual scripture here. Right, exactly. So so what we see, in, and so the, um, Qureshi is using, this is very traditional Arabic Islamic mm -hmm. uh, art. And and in Islam, you don't, um, it's, it's considered improper to represent the human figure. Right. Uh, and so most Islamic art... Uh, is is calligraphy or mm -hmm. geometric yeah. or, or or something like that, rather than Western art, which is you know highly representational. And so, um, so so this is very very much inspired by this kind of classic mm -hmm. uh, calligraphy, and and you can see it's just gorgeous, right? I mean, the the the, the calligraphy is mm -hmm. itself an art form. Yeah. And so some of the key words here. So at the very center of of the circle is Allah, which is God mm -hmm. uh, in Arabic. And then you've got these four circles uh, around the, the edges that are Nephi, Lehi, Moroni, and Joseph. Mm -hmm. Basically, the people yeah. who brought us this, this text. Yeah. Um, and then, and then the, the, the words around the center are the words of the psalm mm -hmm. uh, itself translated into Arabic. Oh, fascinating. I noticed that it's kind of a circle set within a square. Is, that, is there any symbolism there? Yeah, so um, lots of symbolism, and, and, it, and, and it, it draws on traditional Islamic concepts of what you would see in a mosque, especially. Okay. So if you think about a lot of mosques, um, what they'll oftentimes is, have is, is a round dome mm -hmm. situated on four corners mm -hmm. uh, or, or on four pillars. Right. So if you think about that, sort of go into that, so kind of like like square walls, yeah. right, or, or four pillars, and then a dome above, that's exactly what you see here. Okay. Um, and so this would be very common if, if you go into traditional mosques uh, in, in, in the Middle East or in other places in the Islamic world, and you go right into the middle of it and then look up, yeah. and you would, this is this is what it would look like uh, yeah. when looking up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen things like that. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, I think I've seen that, also that symbol of the, sort of circumscribed square or the squared circle used in, in LDS temples too, kind of maybe a reference to heaven and earth and the union of heaven and earth. Yeah, I think so. You know, and, and that's the great thing about geometry is, mm -hmm. is that 
it can it can carry a lot of meaning. Yeah. It 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 can have multiple meanings, you know, multiple interpretations, mm -hmm. and it actually can transport. Uh, you know, shapes are one of the few things that are truly transcultural, right? Sure, yeah. um, everybody uses circles, everybody uses squares, <laughs> yeah. and, and they may sort of import different meanings into them or into some of the numbers uh, that, that, that are here, but, it, but it, I think it allows people to, to kind of connect with it in, yeah. in a universal way. Yeah. Obviously, this is a very different kind of visual than we typically see in LDS art. Um, what do you think is the value of connecting cultures to LDS scripture or doctrine um, and just having like a different kind of visual. Yeah. Well, I, I love this because uh, Qureshi, who I, I don't know personally, but um, but as I understand, he's, he's, his parents are both Pakistani uh, Muslim and Norwegian oh, Latter-day right. Saint, you know, a very normal family, <laughs> right? I mean, we all, we all know people like that. Um, and, and so actually what I love about this is it's, it's a melding of, of these two artistic traditions, right? So much of Latter-day Saint art comes out of a Western tradition, right? Um, but, uh, and, and that's beautiful, that's great, but what, the, what this shows is, is a way to connect uh, for, for, you know, the restoration scripture to connect authentically yeah. with other cultures, yeah. other traditions that, that may be more resistant to mm -hmm. some of our traditional Western, mm -hmm. you know, figurative paintings, uh, but, to, but to actually the, to focus on on the beauty and the, um, for, for, for Islam, um, the, the word itself um, is God breathing into the world. So, so, for, so for Christians, when we think about God entering into the world, we think about Jesus, mm -hmm. right? He's the incarnation. He's literally God coming into the world. Mm -hmm. But for Muslims, it's God breathing into the world or God entering into the world. He does so through the word, through the Quran. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and, and so that's why the, the word itself, we, when we say the word, we mean Jesus. When they say the word, they mean scripture or, okay. or, or, or the word of God or the, or, or the Quran. And so I, I think this is a great way for us to think about what are the ways that scripture itself, the words themselves, yeah. are, are kind of breathed into the world uh, yeah. by God? Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Um, anything else you want to add? No, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I just think, I, I would actually, we, um, uh, my wife and I, we lived in Egypt uh, early in our marriage. Yeah. Our oldest son was born there. And so you saw this kind of art all, all over the place, not just in mosques, but in people's homes. Yeah. So we actually had um, our our family, we, we, uh, uh, you know, uh, our names and so forth, uh, on a piece of calligraphy, nice. and 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 people will do you know beautiful things with words and so mm -hmm. forth that put in this kind of artistic calligraphy. So in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. when I first saw this, it kind of transported me back mm -hmm. to this time living in Egypt and just just thinking about the 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 beauty that we saw. Uh, in this very distinctive art form of, mm -hmm. of artistic calligraphy. Yeah, I think in our global church today, it's just really amazing to see um, different art forms and cultures being brought into LDS art, and uh, and I think really important to yeah. help to help people around the world feel connected to it. Um, yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you. Me.